Hey everybody, it's Sean from Shooty School. This is my fourth and final Metal Month video sponsored by ToonTrack. Thank you so much, ToonTrack. I love your stuff. If you missed the first three episodes, check the description below. We've created an entire metal song by this point. Now for years, people have been asking me, how do I get into drum fills? How do I work with them in Easy Drummer? Well, if you want to get started on that, you already have because you're here right now. So let's rock and roll. So we're going to use what I call the audition trick. It's where I simply loop a section in my DAW, and then on the Grooves tab, directly out of the search results area, we can just play grooves right out of this area, and it will sync with our DAW. It's a fantastic workflow. If you need to know more about it, check out my audition video. The link is in the description below. So we're mostly going to be using the Grooves tab and the audition trick, but we're also going to use Edit Play Style and the Grid Editor. I'm going to skip the intro for now. We'll do that at the end with the Grid Editor because it's more advanced. Let's start with the Preverse. But before that, let's ask a simple subjective question, where do drum fills belong? They can go anywhere depending on your taste. They can go in the beginning, in the middle, or at the end of a song section. I'm going to concentrate at the end, where pickup notes go, where turnarounds go, where transitions go. At the end of a section, that's typically a transition into a different section of the song where the writing changes, the riff changes, anything changes. And if that feels like a speed bump, you're going to distract your listener. We want that to either feel as smooth as possible or better, predictable as possible. We want to communicate with the listener's subconscious. So when we go from this section to that section, the listener, without thinking about it, understands the song's about the change. That's the goal. Let's rock and roll. So we're working in this pre-verse and I want a single measure fill here, starting on measure 24 and going to measure 25 to transition us into the verse. First thing I want to do is I want to get a vibe of what that verse is. I need to know what this fill is transitioning us into. So let me do some playback from measure 23 so we can hear a little bit of the pre-verse into the verse and let's just hear this transition. Even though that verse is super chunkity chuggity, um, the hi-hats close, the strings are palm muted, we're actually winding the song down, which is pretty typical for a verse. That's where the vocalist comes in and starts telling his story or making his statement. So I don't want this fill to be really loud and fast to build this up only for the band to drop down. I want this fill to act like a prelude for the verse. So I want this fill to wind down a little bit and not be so busy. So let's check out some filters real quick. So I'm going to go over to the genre filter and I'm not going to select metal yet. We'll select that after because the verse we're going into isn't a super heavy dynamic groove. So let's not do metal yet, but under type, you have to select fill or you'd simply, it'll take you forever to find fills. Under time signature, I'm going to select 4-4 because let's not waste time auditioning fills that are not in our time signature. Lastly, I'll select the Easy Drummer 3 MIDI folder. So if you only own the Easy Drummer 3 core program and you hear a fill you like, you'll be able to seek it out yourself. Very cool. Now, auditioning gets a little tricky because we're going to be looping a very small section of the song. It's going to get repetitive and we're going to be hearing fills blast over and over and over again. So there's a couple ways to do it. I'm still going to do it using the audition trick, which you'll see, but you don't have to do it that way. So here's some examples. Measure 24 is our target measure here. So where I set my loop point, it could be from measure 23 to 26. So I hear a little before the fill and a little after the fill, which is pretty cool. I'm pretty good at maintaining what this verse sounds like. So I could just loop from measure 23 to 25 or do whatever you feel is necessary. But let me loop from 23 to 25. Enable loop. Here's how short this loop is. Right? And now that I've sorted fills, if I click on a fill, we don't hear the groove anymore from the song track. We only hear this fill looping and looping and looping. Which is fine. I can use my imagination. Does that sound good? Does this sound good? That actually might be cool right there with the closed hi-hats since our verse has closed hi-hats. Here's an advanced audition trick for those of you that follow the channel and completely understand the audition trick. 
if you hit play in your DAW, and then you hit play from your search results area, you'll hear this groove. But when you hit play here, your song track stops playing. You can actually alternate back and forth be between hitting play in a groove from your search results area and hitting play in your song track. So you can actually switch from a fill back to your song track, back and forth and back and forth like this. That's about as advanced as it gets, but if you have decent timing and you can just click in time, you can really audition fills accurately. I'll try this fill. So that's an advanced audition trick for fills. Another way you might want to do it is just, you have that, the pre-verse in mind, bounce, 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 ba -da -da, and you just kind of feel in that, and you can just click on play. Will this one work? I'll drag it down and I'll hit play and I'll find out. I'll remove loop when I do it this way though. That fill actually works. Ignore the volume of it or the dynamics of it. We're just thinking about the writing of it. I'll hit undo. Let's say that fill didn't work. Um, I should hit undo after I select my song track though. This one looks a little bit busier. I'm looking at the dots. That's not gonna work, but just as an example, now I wanna try this one. It's kinda cool actually, I'll hit undo. So there's a couple ways you can do it right there. Let me see if I can find a fill I want. I'm gonna get my loop back. Oh. Uh, let's try this one. I like that a lot. Now, does it feel like that fill is a little quieter or more importantly, the velocity might be low? Listen one more time and decide for yourself. I do. I'm gonna open up Edit Play Style, select all drums, and just turn up the velocity a bit. Now let's hear it. It's just about there. I'm gonna bring it back 10%. And now we have our first fill. Pretty awesome. So if we look down the line, here's verse two. We need that same fill to happen from the chorus into the verse. If you remember in the other episode, the pre-verse is actually the same beat as the chorus. So we have the same situation again. I could set up my whole audition trick all over again, but I just want to move a little faster and some of you might be more advanced. You know, when it comes to short loops in the audition trick, I kind of have a mental audition trick already happening. I know these riffs well, so let me just find this one real quick. Boom. I think this one will hit it right here. So let's check it out and see if we can get moving quick. Hopefully I got it right. Yeah, that's a great, I don't know, those drums just, but it didn't get a tune. It lets me know, hey, we're going back to that section again. I, I like that better than the first fill. I'm actually gonna turn up the dynamics again real quick. It's here. Very cool. So, do I have this situation again? I actually don't. Here's the next chorus, but there's not a verse after it. So I need to kind of go back to square one and go, all right, I need to get the feel of this new section in my head, and we need to build a transition or find a fill that will build into the bridge, not tame it down to the verse anymore. So let's get into that. Let's check out the bridge section which is the, the power hand on the tom, kind of riffing eighth notes. Let's hear what it sounds like entering into that beat though. Yeah, that fill, that transition, ka -ka 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 boom It's too generic for this situation. So let me go over to the genre column. I'll enable my metal filter because even though we're going into a tom breakdown, 
those toms are still getting hammered pretty good. So let's get the dynamics up with the metal filter. And since we're going into a tom section, let's do a fill that definitely has toms. Hopefully it'll work. Um, that'll kind of help us, you know, preheat the oven, get up the temperature. We don't want to all of a sudden be at 450 degrees. We want to warm up to it like a prelude to it. How's that for an analogy? So here's the toms. So let's audition some of these. Uh, I bet if I hit play, I'm going to notice, but I can read it right in the family name. This, these are triplets. I don't want to deal with triplets. They're a different animal. We're playing pretty straightforward here. So let me get rid of those. I'll right click on the header of the filters. And I'll select resolution, which isn't available by default. And I'll right click on the triplets and exclude them. Now it's a bummer. I only have four groove fills to audition, but at the same time, I'm not going to waste my time auditioning a bunch of triplet stuff. So I'm saving time by doing this. So let me set up my audition trick here. Loop in the DAW. And let's just see what's, what happens. I'm going to try and do the advanced audition trick for this one. Let's see if I can do it. That one's good. I liked this one the most. It, it wasn't perfect, but it had a, there's some statement snares in there that really pop out and say, hey, I'm over here. They really draw the attention. So let's see if I can work with this one. This fill is actually two bars long, but I only want a one bar fill. So let's just drag it down. And if I mouse over the left side of the fill, I can click and drag to the right. Now it's only one measure long. And I'll do the same thing for the chorus to take up that blank spot. Now let's hear it. I'll remove loop so we can hear what it sounds like entering the bridge. We can really judge it. I love the first half. We're halfway there. So let's do a little bit of grid editing. I'm going to try and go as easy as possible as, you know, maybe it's your first time going into the grid editor. This fill is highlighted. If I double click it, it will launch the grid editor and I will see right here the fill. See it's orange and this is orange, so it's not hard to find what you're working on, okay? The color coordination's awesome. I'm just gonna zoom in, get it focused. Let me start playback from 72 because I don't need pre-roll anymore. I'm focused onto this one part of the bridge, excuse me, the fill here. So it's, these snares are like a statement, ba ba, and then they happen again, ba ba. I just don't want it to happen twice. So, you know, just a different sounding instrument could help someone tame this down. So I just bring this down to a tom. Looks like I'm floating around here. I'm not locked to the grid. So let me hit undo, enable snap. Now let's hear it. That's actually much better. But the silence in between these hits, there's not a flow, it's still a statement. So we've tamed down the sound a little bit, which I think gets us closer, but the silence in between these, it doesn't flow me into that bridge, which is going something like that. It's like, I'm kind of getting this feel. You need to use your imagination when you're thinking about this stuff, okay? Get feels in your body, all that stuff. You want all the chemistry to feel good. And this just feels choppy to me. So adding an extra note probably right here will probably do it for me. So let's see what happens. See these vertical tiny white lines? I want to add a note right here, but there's not a vertical tiny white line to actually add a note to. It'll go to either side of it, but I want to go right here. That means my resolution is not correct. So let's just turn our resolution up to 16th notes. Now we have a line here. Let me just add toms here real quick. Let's see if this does it. Yeah, that helps me get into it a little better. Instead of it being the drummer's both hands, ba-boom, that's actually kind of probably a pain in the butt for a do 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 ka do 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 ka ba ba boom You know, they're kind of rushing around the kit and maybe it sounds rushed too. So let's make these single hits. So let's take this one out of here. I'll take this one here, take this one here. Now let's hear it. I like that. 
Ah, you know what? I do want the statement back. I just don't want it to hit twice. Let's try this. Yeah, and this snare is a little bit quiet. So open up my velocity lane. Look how turned down that snare is. Look how turned up these snares are. Let's match them. Yeah, something like that. That's pretty smooth. Um, with my skill set, I might just create a whole fill on my own here. But if I was intimidated by the grid editor, and I just need to make a little tiny adjustment just to make a prefab fill work a little better with my song, that's a great example. That's a way to think about it. I hope you got something out of it. Let's keep moving. This video is getting a little long to demonstrate to you how to create a fill out of edit play style. So there is a bonus video down in the description. Now we're going to move on to the grid editor and maybe you will be able to create your first grid editor fill for the first time after this. Let's check this intro out. This is going to be the cliff notes on how to make your first fill in the grid editor. Hopefully I'll include enough information for you to be able to pick up on it. You could teach hours, days, weeks on how to master the grid editor. So let me double click the intro. And I want a fill in the last measure from measure 16 to 17. So let me get my playback at measure 16. I want an old school Dave Lombardo Seasons in the Abyss style fill. We won't achieve that perfectly today, but if you pick up on what I'm doing right now, maybe you can take it further, okay? Just a, you know, air drumming type situation right here in the last measure. So I want to clear out that last measure. If you remember, in the other episode, we put a pickup note right here. I'm going to get rid of it. We might need it, we might not. Now, without explaining rhythmic music theory, let's just look at the resolution menu and go, do I want a slow fill at quarter notes, something more stompy in statement? Do I want a medium tempo fill, with the, which is eighth notes? Bup, 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 bup. Or do I want something fast, which is 16th notes? Da, 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 da. We're going to stick with 16th notes. But notice when I change it to quarter, my vertical lines go away. Much less of them are there. Eighth notes, watch these vertical lines. Right? And now 16th notes. A lot of us probably coming from uh, maybe a stringed instrument background, maybe keyboard, whatever. So when you're playing 16th note, it's pretty, pretty fast. K -k 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 -k. So now that I've selected in the resolution, I'll grab the pencil tool and let me just draw a kick drum in here. What's that sound like? Sounds like this. Don't worry, that's not the fill. But now I have the notes laid out. And you can look at this a bunch of different ways. I've thought about a million ways to say this, but here's today's way to say it. You know, there's 16 notes. Ignore that we're on measure 16 and 17 because there's 16 notes here, which has nothing to do with measure 16. That's a kind of a symmetrical number. That's eight times two is 16, four times four is 16. You know, it's a lot of symmetrical things happening here. So let's draw something visually symmetrical. Here's two beats. So let's grab these next two beats. I'll hold shift. I'll grab every other pair of beats. See that? So here's 16 notes. This isn't this note's a part of measure 17, so we're not even thinking about it. Now just grab these and I'll bring them down. See how symmetrical that looks? Let's listen to that. That's a fill right there. It sounds like a generic drum machine, the one I used, you know, in the late 80s, early 90s, but that is a, a fill right there. So let's leave this kick drum where it is and let's just grab these other snare drums and drag them down. I don't want a hi-hat though and let me just get the hi-hat out of here. Look, I'm doing a fill. I don't need to see the hi-hat or the ride. Certain genres or tasks you will, but in this case I want kick snare toms. It's a great way to organize this panel and you can just reset the order here if you want. Now let me grab these other snares. I'll leave the first two and drag it down to the tom. Listen to this. Let me repeat that. Look at this. That's like a legit me in early high school 
how I play drums and thought about drums, and I loved it. And if you don't do any grid editing, try this. Because once you get this down and understand it and can program it quickly, well, then you can actually take off from there and just become a composer of drum fills. It's a great foundation. So one more time, let's hear it. It's pretty generic. Now, if we just change, mess up this sequence of two notes at a time, just in one spot, it might kind of get some class into it. All of a sudden it's not so boxy. So I just randomly grab that and drag it down. Let's listen to it. it totally sounds to now it now it, just that one note right there made it go from I'm sequencing on a grid to oh someone's thinking about this fill. Really. So now that I have my 16th note pattern laid out and I'm actually excited about it as basic as it is and this works. Let me do one trick now that the foundation is laid out. Now let's go twice as fast as 16th notes to 32nd notes. We saw more lines showed up and let's just add a 32nd note somewhere. I'm not actually sure where right now, but uh, let's try it right here. It's a little stuttery. It's going to work somewhere though. Yeah, it's going to work there. That sounds stuttery there, but that's because when a drummer all of a sudden double times how fast he's playing, he typically doesn't bring the same strength as he would if, if he was hitting slower. So it might sound a little weird because the velocity is off. Velocity is strength. So let me open up the velocity paint, uh, lane. Where's that snare? I'm going to select the snares, which I was already on. And here's these two snares that are playing real fast. So he, drummer playing double time all of a sudden out of the blue might hit these softer. Let me just ramp the first one down. Now let's hear it. Whoa, that sounds pretty cool. That sounds pretty cool. Let me zoom in. I'm just going to randomize these a little bit. Maybe a drummer all of a sudden playing double time is timing's going to suffer a little bit. So cool, man. That's so cool. Sorry. I mean, that's the, what it, that's how you do it. I hope I got it right on the first try. Let's see. If that was the first drum fill I ever made, I'd be pretty happy with it. And I think those steps are reasonable for someone to hop in there for the first time and just try that. See if you can recreate that. And if you can recreate that step by step, and they were pretty simple steps, once you start dragging stuff around a little more beyond what we just did in this video, man, you, you'll be able to take control. You know, you'll be able to produce, you'll be able to write, you'll be able to command maybe the drummer you're working with if you start understanding this stuff right here. So I hope that was a, an awesome tutorial for you. Thanks for joining me in this year's Metal Month series. I'm Sean from Shooty School. I have two social groups, one on Facebook, one on Discord for like minds and basic support. Check out shootyschool.com for more content and free videos. Tune track, you guys rock. Maybe I'll catch you next year if the apocalypse doesn't come. <laughs>